Hi, welcome to RC Kicks. On today's show, well, I've got two new RCs to show you. One that I purchased myself. Yeah, it was a bit expensive, so we'll, we'll gloss over that, but it is mwah. And the second was gifted to the show by a lovely guy called Neil, who even came over to RC Kicks and dropped it off. And then I bent his ear for about three hours about RC, so, uh, and made him late for his next appointment. So sorry about that, but a massive thank you to Neil. It is a lovely car, so we're gonna dive into that as well. I kind of made a start on it, whereas I should have shown you it before I even started it, but I just couldn't help myself. Anyway, hit it, Charlie. at here if you don't know already is a kit 58069 on a ta01 chassis now this was released back on the 30th of july 1991 and it runs in 1993 this example is obviously being run and has seen better days but it is complete now i'm not sure whether this body can be saved I have looked around and there is aftermarket bodies around, but none of them are actually in stock at the moment. So that's a little bit tricky to find. The decals, you can get the decals from MCI Racing. I had a look this morning and they're, they are available. And going by the kind of decals that we've got, it should be pretty good quality as there's not that many actual decals for it. They're mainly just little lettering. So the, you actually paint this all up yourself. So this is not stickers. So really they're very basic, simple stickers. This one's probably the hardest one because you've got the overlay of blue to white. So that getting that one to look nice, but this sort of thing is super easy for them to do. Now, believe it or not, this car has been re-released on 58515 and it's the Toyota Sleeker GT4 1990. So they added the 1990 to it and it came out on the TT01 Type E chassis. Now, the body was exactly the same and that was on the 14th of March 2012. But the issue is you can't find the bodies at all. I thought maybe we would see more bodies available and more decals from the second release but then going by it's 2012 that's still 10 years ago so it doesn't seem to be any more around than the ones back in the day from 1993 so definitely restoring this is going to be a little bit of a challenge now I have started doing a few bits and pieces since Neil were kind enough to drop it off and I didn't get it on camera because I was just getting too carried away. Luckily it's got a manual in lovely condition as well, as well as a massive bag of parts. So I've definitely got some stuff to work with in here. Um, so I, I don't know what to do with the body. I may try and touch it up a little bit i'm gonna try and source another body for it i have another idea that i'm going to keep secret for a little while and if it pans out i'll let you know right let's take the body off and we can take a look at the chassis so when neil dropped it off it didn't have the correct shocks they should be blue like this uh, but they were in the parts bag so i fitted them back on again now obviously i'm going to strip this down completely to rebuild it but i wanted to make sure everything kind of fits and works okay it didn't have a receiver in it so i managed to source a vintage receiver all the other electronics were in it also he gave me in the parts bag a whole other mechanical speed controller and resistor so i can actually change that out as it's a bit pitted I put another motor in it just for now, a torque tune motor. It did have a silver can in it. 
What else have I done? Oh, I found a battery clip as that was missing. I had one of those in my parts bin. Oh, the wheels. These are two piece wheels. The ones that are actually out on the Escort right now are just a single piece. But these, I don't know if you can see through there, they're a two piece and they were set the wrong way around. So I've reset them back to this one this uh, format you can make them like a deep dish version if you spin them around the other way which doesn't look too bad now these are a bit yellow so i will do the peroxide bath on them i did manage to find some tires as well these are the correct ones i had them in my parts bin so i put new tires on it with new foams inside as well change the bumper the bumper that was on the front of this was wrong this is the correct bumper this is not a brand new one this is one that i've used a little bit so I put that on anyway for now, but I will try and source another one. The chassis on this hasn't done too much work, but I actually have one of these with no damage at all on it. So that's going to go onto this. So apart from that, the arms look OK. I will try and source a new bumper. They're really easy to get hold of. Uh, and all the rest of the parts look good. So I should be able to make this really look the business and back to a full shelf queen. Now it's got everything in it, as well as the amount of parts that I've got. So I could actually make this to a pretty high standard. So that's really good as these chassis are really hard to get hold of in the gray. They're very easy to find in the black right now, but gray, definitely not. So I'm definitely gonna be able to get the chassis all looking lovely. It's just gonna be the body that I think is gonna be the biggest challenge. Right, that's a look at this. Massive thanks for Neil for dropping it off. It's very kind of him. And now I can put some money into it to bring it back to a lovely shelf queen condition. So let's check out the second car that's new to the channel. So what you're looking at here is pretty obvious. It's a team associated RC10 and this is a team car. Now, if you've been watching the show for a while, you'll go, hey, but I recognize that body. This is just on here temporary. It's an old body because I replaced it. That car there used to have it, but I had it pro painted. So I just had this. When I bought this, it didn't come with the body. So I've just put this on it for now. I do have an aftermarket penguin body to go on it. But I want to get it pro painted. I also need to get my B2 pro painted as well. So it'll happen at some point in the future when I got a little bit more money. But this one was a little bit expensive, but it is in lovely condition. Now, as far as I can tell, this is kit 6035. It's the alloy version. There was two versions of this kit when it came out. The 6036 was the carbon variant. Um, obviously, as you can see, this has the alloy, black alloy on it. It has hasn't done that much work it looks like it's had a new front bulkhead on it but it's got a few little scratches but not much at all now it has been partly restored by the person i bought it off and that person also sold me uh, that one i think it was uh, uh, about three months ago so he managed to talk me into getting this which was a little bit expensive but it is lovely and i know he does restore them really nicely now this has the stealth transmission on it which is really nice to see so obviously it's got a few bits and pieces that's the rear spoiler bit on it it doesn't have the body like i said but it does look like it's been restored really well everything is in lovely condition it has got the correct wheels correct tires from what I can see, everything seems to be pretty much exactly as it should be. What else can I tell you about this? Well, it was 1990 when this was released. Now, apparently the early ones of this had what you can see here, all white uh, parts. And later on, they were converted to black. So you can tell the difference between an early one and a late one by that. But this one, I assume it's an early one, but it could be that when it's been restored, the white parts have been used instead of black. Um, there is a few other little bits and pieces that can give it away, but I haven't really looked into it yet to see if I can find out if it is truly an early one or it's a late one. But it is in lovely condition and I'm super chuffed to be able to add it to the collection. I do have a graphite, but not the 6036 version of this. I have the early graphite which is that one there so you can see it doesn't have the um stealth transmission in it so there is two so at some point i will try and find a team car in uh, carbon now i do like the paint job that comes on this i'll put a picture up here of what it actually looks like and i will get it painted box art as i really like it so there you go. Obviously, I've got to find some vintage electronics for it. And it also needs a vintage motor. So I'll try and source one of those. I need a few motors, actually. So there you go. Just a quick look at two new projects that are coming on the show. Things are getting 
busy. Well, I suppose from now till Christmas is the busiest time of the year for RC Kicks, so I better get a move on. The projects are racking up and I'm ticking them off and two are appearing in their place. So definitely going to get that Celica GT4 all back to Mint Shelf Queen. Massive thanks to Neil for dropping it off. That's so brilliant. It really helps. And now I'll invest some money in it and we'll bring it back up to a beautiful and save another little gem. As for the RC10, well, it's going to take a little bit longer. So I thought, hey, I'd show it to you now so that I can then arrange for a pro painter to paint the body up. And it will be a while before it comes back on the show when it's finished up, probably along with the B2 as well. Once I've got that body done, I'll get them done at the same time. Anyway, if you'd like to help the show, head over to the RC Geeks Patreon. We've got tons of RC content from behind the scenes and every bit of contribution helps so I can make extra content for you. Don't forget to hit that bell notification and subscribe if you haven't already, as it really helps the little show so that we can produce more content as we grow. Thanks very much. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.